following and living with Christ through the feasts and seasons gives us a pattern for our daily lives. We aren't supposed to observe a feast or liturgical season as a complete task. Like cramming for a test and never looking back, it's not just something to learn and then put aside when we're older. There are riches to draw from the well of the liturgical year every day of every year of our lives. Drawing from those riches deepens our spiritual lives and changes our perspectives. It arms us with the tools needed to deal with current events. Lent is a special time of prayer, penance, sacrifice, and good works in preparation of the celebration of Easter. In the desire to renew the liturgical practices of the Church, the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy of Vatican Council II stated, the two elements which are especially characteristic of Lent, the recalling of baptism or the preparation for it, and penance, should be given greater emphasis in the liturgy and in liturgical catechesis. It is by means of them that the Church prepares the faithful for the celebration of Easter, while they hear God's Word more frequently and devote more time to prayer. Since the earliest times of the Church, there is evidence of some kind of Lenten preparation for Easter. For instance, second-century Greek bishop Saint Arrhenius wrote to Pope Saint Victor I, commenting on the celebration of Easter and the differences between practices in the East and the West. The dispute is not only about the day, but also about the actual character of the fast. Some think that they ought to fast for one day, some for two, others for still more, some make their day last forty hours on end. Such variations in the observance did not originate in our own day, but very much earlier, in the time of our forefathers. Lent becomes more regularized after the legalization of Christianity in AD 313, and the Council of Nicaea in 325 was emphasizing the 40-day period of fasting. Finally, Pope St. Leo preached that the faithful must fulfill with their fasts the apostolic institution of the 40 days. By the end of the 4th century, the 40-day period of Easter preparation known as Lent existed, and that prayer and fasting constituted its primary spiritual exercises. Of course, the number 40 has always had special spiritual significance regarding preparation. On Mount Sinai, preparing to receive the Ten Commandments, Moses stayed there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights without eating any food or drinking any water. Elijah walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of the Lord, Mount Horeb, another name for Sinai. And most importantly, Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert before he began his public ministry. Once the 40 days of Lent were established, the next development concerned how much fasting was to be done. In Jerusalem, for instance, people fasted for 40 days, Monday through Friday, but not on Saturday or Sunday. So that made Lent last for eight weeks. In Rome and in the West, people fasted for six weeks, Monday through Saturday. Eventually, the practice prevailed of fasting for six days a week over the course of six weeks, and Ash Wednesday was instituted to bring the number of fast days before Easter to 40. The rules of fasting varied. First, some areas of the church abstained from all forms of meat and animal products, while others made exceptions for food like fish. For example, Pope St. Gregory, writing to St. Augustine of Canterbury, issued the following rule. We abstain from flesh, meat, and from all things that come from flesh, as milk, cheese, and eggs. Second, the general rule was for a person to have one meal a day in the evening or at 3 p.m. These Lenten fasting rules also evolved. Eventually, a smaller repast was allowed during the day to keep up one's strength for manual labor. Eating fish was allowed, and later eating meat was also allowed, through the week except on Ash Wednesday and Friday. Dispensations were given for eating dairy products if a pious work was performed, and eventually this rule was relaxed totally. Over the years, modifications have been made to the Lenten observances, making our practices not only simple, but also easy to follow. 
Ash Wednesday still marks the beginning of Lent, which lasts 40 days, not including Sundays. The present fasting and abstinence laws are very simple. On Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, the faithful fast and abstain from meat. People are still encouraged to give up something for Lent as a sacrifice or do good works. An interesting note is that technically on Sundays and solemnities like St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, and the Annunciation, March 25th, one is exempt and can partake of whatever has been offered up for Lent. Nevertheless, I was always taught, if you gave something up for the Lord, tough it out. Don't act like a Pharisee looking for a loophole. Moreover, an emphasis must be placed on performing spiritual works, like attending the Stations of the Cross, attending Mass, making a weekly holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament, taking time for personal prayer and spiritual reading, and most especially, making a good confession and receiving sacramental absolution. Although the practices may have evolved over the centuries, the focus remains the same. To repent of sin, to renew our faith, and to prepare to celebrate joyfully the mysteries of our salvation, which will bring us to the Easter season. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.